guys, I'm here with Paul Blush or hey. um, Bruce Springsteen. Maybe <laughs> we were born to run. No. <laughs> Paul yeah, the, Blush. The Christian version. Of yes. Bruce. Yes. Anyway, um, um, I wanted to ask you a couple of questions. Sure. Um, you've been leading worship for quite a while, I would mm -hmm. say. Yeah, a few years. Are you saying I'm old? No, I'm not okay, saying yeah. you're old. My dad's age sort of thing. But okay. anyway, no, yep. we won't talk about that. Yes. Um, no, but what keeps you fresh? You're one of the most energetic guys I know you remind me of my four-year-old son and you're just so on fire for Jesus I love that. what keeps you alive in God oh man gosh in 30 words or less um, I guess you know having my life changed by him years ago you know kind of did the music thing doing the Jersey Shore yes I did everybody kind of wanted to be the next Bruce Springsteen <laughs> growing up in Jersey and Philly it was like yeah and then I got radically born again saved like so i can't deny it i've seen too much to turn back now and um as we wrote uh, we wrote that <laughs> i've seen too much to turn back now and uh so i think is that a new song uh well yeah just the last couple of days it was a line from our pre-chorus that we wrote but um so I, you know that's and just serving in my church over the years and just knowing and being convinced that there's no other solution uh for the the world to get any better is just having a personal relationship with Jesus Christ and it's letting the Holy Spirit transform a life, a marriage, a family, a community, a city, a nation. I mean, there's no plan B. So I guess maybe being in the local church and off the top of my head, that would be what keeps me alive is just loving God, loving the people that I get to do life with and then traveling and getting to meet folks like you and, and other writers like this past week is just sort of you know, they overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. So yeah. just hearing people's stories is just, yeah, it just makes me like, I'm, I'm ready to do this again for another couple of years, you know? <laughs> and like, you're talking about the local church. You've been in your mm -hmm. local church for 25 years mm -hmm. and it's a local community church. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you've had job offers all over the place to, you know, go and do mm -hmm. things, but you've just, you felt like, you said you, you yeah. felt like that's the place for your family yes. to raise your kids. Yes. Can you maybe just like speak into, you know, the power of that? Yeah, I mean, for us, you know, it's not maybe not everybody's call to do that, um, but for us, it was just we were anchored, and and I feel like you have to pick a group of people to grow old with and do life with, and so we we said, you know, we went down to Texas and we were involved in YWAM and ministry and all that kind of thing, and we just said, well, we picked these people. We just stayed there and started doing life, doing church, doing ministry, uh, writing songs for our church. Never in a million years, there was no such thing as CCLI or anything. It was just writing songs that our church sang, you know, and we were, we gleaned from David, um, you know, the Garrett's and Scripture and Song and Graham Kendrick and a lot of the, 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 the a lot of those folks, you know, yeah. and just a blast to be with Graham again after all these years. But, um, but the local church has anchored me. It's helped make me accountable. People are not impressed. I still love it when someone comes back from our church. They're like, hey, guess what? We were at a church at our cousins this summer and they did one of your songs and i'm like how about that <laughs> isn't that something man man thanks for telling me you know like i it just keeps keeps a handle on reality like man we're just my wife and i are just trying to over the years just raise three kids not mess them up and we need to be plugged into a body of people who are who think like us and some that don't think like us and some that are like us and some that rub us the wrong way but that's church that's yeah. family you know yeah and so for us, it's been a healthy, a healthy place for us spiritually to just be rooted and planted in a group of people that know us beyond, you know. What you do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. What about songwriting? So you've written loads and loads of songs over the years. How does that happen? How does that work for you? How do you finish them and then lead them? Okay, well, in a nutshell, I would say, you know, I try to pay attention to those moments in worship where you're not trying to write a song, you're just sort of just sincerely and honestly trying to just sing your prayer. Maybe it's at the end of a chorus, a familiar chorus, and you're just lingering there for a few minutes, you know, that we've yeah. all done that. Yeah. And maybe there's just, hey guys, blah, 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 and you, or you just sort of, in the moment, there's a scripture that comes to mind, you speak it out, and then you just kind of put a melody to it, and before you know it, it's just a simple phrase, like, you know, whatever Open they want. The eyes right. Of my heart. Uh, Lord. Yeah, okay. Exactly. A very simple phrase. Let's just repeat that. Let's just ask the Lord, God, open our hearts this morning. Yes, Lord. And so I would say, you know, 90% of my songs begin there. Mm -hmm. And then it's a matter of like taking that inspired idea 
and and not trying to get too analytical, but just carve time out during the week and worship with that idea and play with it and worship with a childlike heart and see if anything else begins to emerge, you know? Mm. So um, that's sort of the very short process for me. I can't really get long-winded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If people, I do have a DVD on songwriting and a book that's Check 300 pages Check called God Songs. There we go. Shameless plug, but. We'll, um, we'll, we'll tag it okay. in this thing. Um, okay. Last question. Mm -hmm. Okay, someone's starting out in their church. They want to be part of the worship team, lead mm -hmm. worship. Mm -hmm. What would you say to them? I would say, first of all, are you called? You know, just know that, you know, have people confirm that there is a calling on your life. Because you may say, oh, I want to do this. I want to do this so bad. Like, I'd love to fly a plane. I'd love to be able to be, <laughs> build a house. But I'm, I can't. I'm terrible with a screwdriver and a hammer. <laughs> so first of all, are you called? And number two, if you are called, then I try to identify maybe with a few trusted believers in your church that know you well and just ask them say humble yourself and go what do you think my my strongest you know my primary gifting is what do you think is as you have observed me and they may say oh you're a worshiper or man your vocals or, or just your you know your piano playing is just so anointed so whatever your primary gifting is man just eat drink and sleep that just mm -hmm. take it as a spiritual discipline don't don't treat it like oh yeah practicing my guitar then you know um, I should be fasting or on my face, you know, praying and all that. Sure, we should be doing that. But see playing your scales and practicing as a spiritual discipline. Because it says in Chronicles 27, all the musicians were trained and skilled in music for the Lord. So I would say, so your primary gift, eat, drink, and sleep. And then the word of God, prayer, local fellowship, like the basics. There's not some secret like, ooh, the mystery. And what are three secrets to effective worship leading it's like a lot of it is just the fundamentals just repetition of the fundamentals be plugged in to a healthy body where you can be real I hope you have two or three people in your life you can be transparent with you can be real with everyone else you're like hi hi good morning praise <laughs> God praise God but when you're walking through hard times and dark times you need some people you can go to and just rip your soul open and say man this is where I'm really at and I really need prayer and I need you to be a safe place so I pray God would give you two or three safe places that you can go to and be completely honest and real. That's very, very important if you want to be a long-term worship leader or worship team member or worship pastor. In fact, I would encourage you to think of yourself as a worship pastor, not a guitarist, not a worship leader, but an actual pastor that pastors people into the presence of God with whatever your primary gifting is. Awesome. So. Discipleship. Amen. Amazing. Amen. You know Amen. what? You're getting ushered off. Thank you so okay. much, Paul Balosh. Yeah, I hope to see you face to face someday. Please come really to Australia. Do. Please, okay. Please. Good day. Can I say good day? Good day. Bye. <laughs>